5. Specific Suggestions for Simple Sabotage It will not be possible to evaluate the desirability of simple sabotage in every area without having in mind specifically what individual acts and results are embraced by the definition of simple sabotage. Therefore, a listing of specific acts follows classified according to types of target. This list is presented as an example rather than an exhaustive outline. As new techniques are developed or new fields explored, it should be elaborated and expanded. For this reason, feedback from those activists in the field is encouraged, as this information should be evaluated and included in future updates of this field manual. Special note on explosives. With some exceptions, explosives are discouraged as a tool for the simple saboteur for several reasons. First being the inherent danger of explosives to the saboteur. Second being the difficulty in preventing the innocent from being harmed. Third being the exaggerated response authoritarians exhibit when explosives are involved. 5-1 Buildings Government offices, court and municipal buildings, police stations, jails, county slash parish, utility, maintenance buildings, and even corporate buildings of the military industrial complex or the prison industrial complex, along with obvious targets in the U.S. like the NSA, FBI, BATF, DOJ, INS, IRS, DEA, DHS, TSA, FAA, etc., or their equivalent agencies in other governments are outstanding targets for simple sabotage. They are extremely susceptible to damage, as will be listed below, and they offer some of the best opportunities to such friend saboteurs as janitors, cleaning crews, and casual visitors, and when damaged, they present a relatively large handicap to our enemy, both psychologically and actual. 5-1.1 Fire The use of fire is a point of controversy, but most will agree that if fire is to be used as a tool of simple sabotage, it must be used selectively and with great care to avoid injuring the innocent or damaging private property. That said, fires can be started wherever there is an accumulation of flammable material. Warehouses are obviously promising targets as are fuel storage areas, but incendiary sabotage need not be confined to them alone. Whenever possible, arrange to have the fire start after you have left the area. Use a tea light and paper combination, setting it as close as possible to the inflammable material you want to burn. Remove the tea light from its metal base if it has one, leaving only the small candle. You may need to trim the edges of the candle to make it as small as practical. This will leave as little residue as possible for inspectors to find after the fire. From a sheet of paper, tear a strip one or two inches wide and wrap it around the base of the candle two or three times. Twist more sheets of paper into loose ropes and place them around the base of the candle. When the candle flame reaches the encircling strip, it will be ignited and in turn will ignite the surrounding paper. The size, heat, and duration of the resulting flame will depend on how much paper you use. Additionally, you may need to use a small amount of Vaseline or other petroleum jelly on the strips of paper to help them ignite. Experiment with this process until you are comfortable and can repeat the results with each attempt before you use it for simple sabotage. With a flame of this kind, do not attempt to ignite anything but easily inflammable materials. To light more resistant materials, one could use such a candle as above plus tightly rolled or twisted paper, which has been rubbed in more petroleum jelly. To create a briefer but even hotter flame, infuse dryer lint with petroleum jelly and form it into a nest of plain or saturated paper, which is to be fired by a candle. Again, experimentation is the key to success. To make another type of simple fuse, rub one end of a piece of cotton string with petroleum jelly. Rub a pinch of gunpowder over the inch of string where greasy string meets clean string. Then ignite the clean end of the string. It will burn slowly without a flame, in much the same way that a cigarette burns, until it reaches the grease and gunpowder. It will then flare up suddenly. The grease-treated string will then burn with a flame. The same effect may be achieved by using matches instead of the grease and gunpowder. Run the string over the match heads, taking care that the string is not pressed or knotted. This too will produce a sudden flame. The advantage of this type of fuse is that 
String burns at a set speed. You can time your fire by the length and thickness of the string you choose. Use a fuse such as the one suggested above to start a fire in an office after hours. The destruction of paper records and other types of documents can be a burden to the enemy. However, fire may not destroy data on computers, so the impact may be more psychological than strategic. Once again, the selection of the target is key to achieving the maximum impact of the simple sabotage. Fire may be more useful as harassment or as a distraction than whatever it may accomplish on its own. In basements or where waste material is kept, janitors should accumulate oily and greasy waste. Such waste sometimes ignites spontaneously, but it can easily be lit with a cigarette or match. If you are a janitor on night duty, you can be the first to report the fire, but don't report it too soon. Also, a clean factory is not as susceptible to fire as a dirty one. Workers should be careless with refuse, and janitors should be inefficient in cleaning and in handling flammable cleaning products. If enough debris and trash can be accumulated, an otherwise fireproof building will become inflammable. Once again, fires can be timed with other events to draw authorities away from a more important activity. 5-1.2 Water, Sewers, and Miscellaneous Fire suppression or fire sprinkler systems may seem like the perfect way to commit simple sabotage. However, automatic sprinkler systems vary in type, function, and design. Some types can be activated by simple means, others are complicated. Some systems spray water from all the sprinklers at once, others only activate one sprinkler at a time or one zone at a time. Some don't even use water. Some automatically contact the fire department, some don't. Some sound an audible alarm and some don't. Before you assume you can use a fire sprinkler system for sabotage, find out the type of system used and make sure it will do what you expect it will do. Research is the key. Do your homework before you commit to a project. Toilets and sewer systems are always vulnerable to a variety of simple sabotage, and unlike a fire, they are not likely to get out of control and cause unwanted damage or injuries. Every public building has toilet facilities, and very little is done to protect them. Also, it's reasonably safe to assume that restrooms are camera-free zones. One plugged toilet won't close a building, but can be a source of irritation and frustration. However, if the entire sewage system of a building can be disrupted, the building will need to be closed until the problem is resolved. A simple plug can be made with a large natural sponge. Moisten the sponge and squeeze it tightly into a ball. Wrap it with string and let it dry. Remove the string when fully dried. The sponge will be in the form of a tight, hard ball. Drop it in a toilet and quickly flush it down. The sponge will gradually expand to its normal size and plug the sewage line. Some experimentation may be needed to get the right size sponge, but keep trying until you are successful. Expanding foam sold at hardware stores in aerosol cans under the brand name Great Stuff can be used for more extensive sewer obstructions. Fill a small sandwich bag with the foam and quickly flush it down the toilet. The foam will expand and escape the bag, plugging the sewer line. Be careful as the foam tends to stick to everything and won't wash off of hands or clothing. It may be possible to attach a longer tube to the nozzle of the can of foam and fish it down the toilet. Three to six feet, or one to two meters. Then discharge the foam directly into the sewer line. Such an action would take some planning and may involve leaving behind evidence, so always take that into consideration when planning any act of simple sabotage, especially those that involve D&D. Oftentimes, outside of a building or in the basement or service area of the building, there are sewer clean-out access caps that can be easily opened and foam can be injected directly into the building's sewer service line. Cans of expanding foam are difficult to conceal, but can be used in an unending list of applications for clogging or gumming up the mechanical works of office machines, elevators, heating slash AC systems, and even security cameras. Quick shots of foam into computer case fans can slowly overheat computers. Expanding foam and injectable glues may be the perfect tools for the friend saboteur as their applications are only limited by the imagination of the anarchist. Door locks and hinges are a weak point in the security of any building, but they can also be a source of irritation when they don't work correctly. Hardware and auto parts stores sell a product called Loctite Thread Locker Red 271. 
This is an amazing product that comes in an easily concealable tube. With a quick squeeze, this product can be injected directly into locks or anywhere a key would fit. It quickly renders the lock useless. Hardware stores also sell a two-part adhesive in a syringe called epoxy. As you actuate the syringe, the two parts mix into a hard, powerful adhesive. Sometimes a toothpick or some other item must be used to stir the mixture for maximum hardening effect. You can use the syringe to inject the epoxy into the hinges of doors that are not in the viewing field of security cameras. This method can be used on older automobiles and trucks with manual door locks. It can also be used on windshield wiper arms and other locations. Your greatest weapon is always your imagination, so set it free to discover what mayhem you can bring upon our enemy. In addition to all the above, late night building maintenance workers can carefully switch signs and mislabel halls, floors, and rooms. Mislabel electrical panels and electrical switches or anything else that will cause low level confusion. Mislabel exits and entrances and parking garages. Move designated parking spaces to different locations, intentionally paint parking lines too close to each other causing cars to be crammed together, remove or alter overhead height slash clearance warnings in parking garages. Building cleaning crews can randomly remove papers and reports from desks and unlock drawers at night, or simply move items from one drawer to another or even from one cubicle to another. Perhaps make it look like one cubicle worker is stealing his co-worker's items. Be selective with your targets and focus on the most productive state supporters and decision makers. If you find it necessary to force entrance into a building, a window or door is usually assumed to be the best way to break in. However, that may not be the case. Windows and doors are usually the primary location of security devices, cameras, and alarms. Interestingly enough, often, the weakest point in a building is a ground-level wall, preferably behind bushes or other landscaping. Many exterior walls are simple wooden frames, or studs set 16 to 24 inches apart with thin chicken wire and paper covered over with stucco. An inexpensive stud finder will tell you where to avoid. Using any of several small hand tools, the stucco between the studs can be quickly and quietly compromised with light tapping and some prying until the paper and wire can be cut away with pliers. The interior of these walls are often simple sheetrock that will also quickly and quietly break away with light tapping and prying.